was almost uh, seven meters diameter. No, the landing trucks, they have 182 centimeter each one. Uh -huh. And three of them are by each ship. And that's a place where I got the first movie picture. There was a tree staying, how you see it there, where it's mm -hmm. hanging over them, the ship. And that tree was eliminated later by Simiasi too. Mm -hmm. And that picture I got, I think, February or March 1975, mm -hmm. in the evening time, about half past five. It mm -hmm. was snowing, raining, and dusty. And in the front, between the tree and my film camera, there was some people working, a farmer, an old man, and a child. Mm -hmm. And if you have good eyes, you can see the ship. It isn't in the front of the tree. It is a little bit behind the tree. Yes. And this flying, doesn't the normal flying of these ships, mm -hmm. that's for demonstration only. Mm -hmm. If they fly on the real normal way, you have seen there how I was moving the tree mm -hmm. now. If they fly on the normal way, they have a good line without this foolish jumping and everything. I see. あ、うん。あの部分だけ独立使うことを考えるから。これだと思うと。聞いてるところからスペース進む。あの前をね。どうやったかな。まだだね。やばい、やばい。これです。まだだよ。ポイント。Do you because it comes to the front, overflies the tree, and then it jumps. Right. Again? Now it's going on. You see? Right there. This 1979 NTV footage shows the site where Meyer shot his 1975 sequence of the beam ship hovering near a farmhouse. As this footage dissolves to Meyer's original film, note the beam ship beginning an aerial display above a large tree which once stood near the farmhouse. Meyer recalls that he was guided telepathically to the location and that the weather was bad. Snow and rain fell throughout the day. Once again, the erratic movement of the craft gives the appearance of an object suspended by a string or wire. Close examination of the film clearly shows the craft circling behind the large tree.
When the size of the beam ship is compared to that of the tree and the house, it becomes obvious that due to its size, it would be impossible to suspend with strings or wire. In addition, the top of the enormous tree can be seen to move as the craft passes over it. This movement can be attributed to the backwash of air created by the ship. Watch again. Once more, the branches can be seen to sway from the force of the beam ship. Mysteriously, within three hours after the filming, Meyer noted that the tree began to die. Inside of three months, the tree was gone, leading to the conclusion that perhaps the electromagnetic radiation or energy contained some harmful elements that might have killed the tree.